today start working on not touching your face because one main way viruses spread is when you touch your own mouth, nose, or eyes. What's up, Journey's Crossing? How's it going? Uh, so glad you guys are here. What's up, students? Uh, Scott here. I'm the youth pastor at Journey's Crossing, and I want to say welcome to the first ever Journey's Crossing online youth groups. Really exciting. Uh, not exactly the way we would have wanted to start it, but either way, we're, we're totally stoked that you're here. Um, so obviously, we're not meeting face-to-face -face because of the whole coronavirus thing, but we thought, you guys are digital natives, so let's like take youth group to them. Like, let's go where you are. So, uh, we're doing that now, and uh, for the Sundays that we're not able to meet, I, we don't know how long that's going to be, this week, probably next week, uh, we're going to meet here online, 1115, and you can watch us on a number of different social media platforms, you can watch us on YouTube, Facebook, Insta, we're going to try for Snapchat, we're going to try for TikTok, we'll see, uh, but if you're watching us on one of those, welcome Thanks for jumping into the conversation. Uh, watch to the end of this video for more ways that you can stay connected to us throughout the week. And uh, all those ways will not have coronavirus connected to them. So we're really <laughs> excited about that. Okay, uh, this has been a week. Wow, crazy. Uh, hopefully you're doing well. This has been the cr one of the craziest weeks in the many, many years of youth ministry that I've done. Um, hope it's... I uh, hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying some time off, I guess. Uh, we're in a series right now called Choose Your Own Adventure. And while this isn't the adventure we would have chosen, today we're going to talk about some of the ways that we can actually maybe even grow in our relationship with God through an event like we're experiencing right now with coronavirus. So let's kick off and start with a question. One minute to talk about this question. Where were you this week? when you found out that coronavirus was gonna be as big a deal as it's turning out to be. So where were you when uh, the NBA decided to stop or like any, the NHL stopped or you realized MLB wasn't gonna start on time, um, Major League Baseball? Or where were you when you found out your school was gonna close? Who were you with? What were you doing? Where were you? Talk about that in a group if you're with a group or think about it yourself. Maybe you wanna journal about it, think about it. You can put this on pause and do that now. So go ahead and do that. You have one minute. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. all the things people are recommending you mm -hmm. do to, to stay safe, to try and avoid it, right? Avoid handshakes. There's a new one making the rounds in China called the Wuhan Shake. Okay. And this is how they are shaking hands in China now. By foot. By foot. The Late Show Center for Disease Control presents Safe Greetings.
welcome back. I, listen, I don't know where you were or who you were with when you got hit with the impact and the news of Corona, but but I guess that it was a better experience if you weren't alone when you got the news. Because stuff like this can be scary. Like, moments like this in life can be really scary. And, it, and they're better gone through. They're better experienced when you've got somebody to go through it with. Even if you have to socially distance yourself from them. And that's just true about life in general. You can't always choose what happens all the time. And some of you right now have had stuff happen in your life that you would never choose for yourself. And you probably wouldn't wish those things on your worst enemy either. And they're things that I don't even try to imagine the pain of, or I can't even try to imagine the pain of. Um, parents that, that split up. Maybe you've been bullied. Maybe there are secrets that you hide every day that you hope to God that nobody finds out about because you're afraid of the consequences. Some of you are just afraid that if you let people in, they wouldn't like you if they got close enough to you to really get to know who you are. So you hold people at arm's length. And you can choose to go through your journey like that. You can decide to do that. Or... You can decide to try this thing that we're talking about today. Last week we talked about, at youth groups, we talked about how knowing God is an adventure, not a formula. And we said that that spending time with God one-on-one is a super important part of that adventure because, because you can't grow in a relationship with somebody that you never spend time with. But for the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about some other ways that we can grow in our relationships with God that are not just one-on-one. And the first one is this. It's inviting people in to go on this journey towards God with you. And actually, doing that is a huge part of God's plan to help you get to know Him better. It's called the church, being a part of His family. Middle schoolers, high schoolers, you need to think about letting some people into your life. People that are your church to really journey with you towards God, because here's the truth. People aren't designed to make that journey by themselves. Think about that for a minute. Welcome back. 10 finger challenge. Put up 10. Put a finger down if you have a friend who's like family to you. Put a finger down if you have a friend who has helped you with homework more than one time. Put a finger down if you have helped a friend talk through a hard family situation. Put a finger down if you have a friend that you wouldn't have met if it wasn't for your school. Put a finger down if you have a sibling whose stuff you regularly borrow. Put a finger down if that sibling gets mad at you for regularly borrowing their stuff. Put a finger down if you appreciate that sibling anyway. Put a finger down if you have relationships in your life that you really couldn't do without. Yes, me too. There are really great loving relationships out there for us if we will invite them into our lives. And for the most part, they make us so much better. And you can choose, that's what that's kind of what today is about. You can choose to invest in a few great relationships because relationships are made to pull us and the people that we're in relationship with closer to God. So I'm gonna tell you about two of these kind of relationships. One you might expect and one you might not. So let's talk about them. 
one of the scriptures that always comes up, a really famous one that always seems to come up when we're talking about relationships is found in the book of Proverbs. And a proverb, a proverb is a short, wise saying. It's in the Bible, and there's an entire book of them called Proverbs. And it's found in Proverbs 12, 26, the one that we're talking about today. It says this, the righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. There's another one, Proverbs 13, 20, walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Probably isn't earth shattering stuff to you, revolutionary to you, but we become like the people we surround ourselves with. That's right out of the Bible. So if we want to get closer to Jesus, shouldn't we surround ourselves with people who want to get closer to Jesus? That just makes sense. Now, now it's not a guarantee that that's going to happen. It's not a guarantee that every Christian friendship is going to help us grow closer to Jesus. But when the person that we're in relationship with really wants to get closer to Jesus, and you do too, you'll help each other. You will be a part of that growing process in each other's lives. It's just kind of how that works. And it's a great thing. I hope you have friends like that, like Paul for me. Uh, Paul was my buddy in high school. Actually, he came from another church in the Midwest to be our intern one summer. And Paul just kind of saw through the bad stuff I was doing. He knew that I was kind of doing my own thing and then coming to church on Sunday and kind of faking my relationship with God. I was super fortunate to cross paths with Paul when I did. And at first it started out like, Ugh, I don't really want to talk to this guy. But after a while, my relationship with him became a choice. And it helped me to grow in relationship with Jesus in some really significant ways, ways that changed everything for me. That's the kind of relation we'd expect to help us grow our friendship with God. But there's another kind. And yes, I've grown closer to God because of my relationships with people who know him, like Paul or others. But I've also grown in my relationship with God because of people who don't know God, like Jesus uh, showed us how to. So uh, Mark 2, 13 through 17, uh, Jesus starts a friendship with this dude named Levi. And Levi is a tax collector, not really well liked by the rest of his friends because tax collectors back in Jesus' day had this reputation for ripping other people off. And Jesus not only ignores how everybody else feels about Levi, but he goes to Levi's house and he has dinner with him. And the crazy thing is a bunch of other tax collectors and other people who are kind of living really messed up lives come to this dinner. They're all having dinner together. This makes the religious people super mad. And it says in Mark, in chapter 2, verse 16, it says this. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw Jesus eating with the sinners and the tax collectors, he asked, or they asked Jesus' disciples, why does he eat with sinners or tax collectors and sinners? Upon hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have come to call the right, not the righteous, or I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus was the example of this. He constantly spent time with people who didn't know God. Uh, people who disagreed with Jesus on stuff. People who made the religious leaders very angry. And Jesus kind of sets the bar and the example for us to do the same today. Uh, Jesus, he didn't show up to this dinner by mistake. Jesus' relationships with these people were a choice. He sought them out. He wanted relationship with them. So we got two groups of people. People who know God and people who don't. How do we choose who to hang out with? Well, I think, I don't think it's an either or. I think it's a both and. I think both types of people can help us grow in a relationship with God and sometimes more or somehow more importantly I think we can help both groups be in a relationship with God here's the truth every relationship that we have with every person can help us grow closer or not grow closer so our relationships with other believers should help us get closer to God but are they and our relationships with people who don't believe in Jesus can can also help us get closer to God but are they? If you want to make it in a relationship with Jesus, if you want to stay in a relationship with Jesus, 
be on the adventure with following Jesus. You've got to invite people to join you on the journey. And you can't control where those relationships show up, but you you can choose to pull back from relationships that lead you away from Jesus, and you can choose to invest even more in the ones that pull you closer, whether they're with people who know him or not. Relationships are a choice, not an accident. Uh, in the book of Romans, Paul says this in chapter 12, verse 2. He says, don't conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. This week, I want to challenge you. Is there a relationship out there that you can invest in? And, and I know you're going to have to be creative to do that. But is there somebody out there who you can invest in? And maybe who can invest in you to help you in your relationship with God? You'll have to get creative with the current state of things. But it is doable and it's worth doing. Let me pray for you. And then I've got a couple of announcements and then we're done for this morning. All right, guys, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this morning and the chance uh, to get together. Thanks that we have like the technology to be able to do that. Um, really, really cool that we can stay connected in the middle of this circumstance. And Father, uh, what we're in the middle of is rough. You know the ins and outs of all of it. And we ask for your help with all of it, God. Um, we ask for people who are fighting against uh, coronavirus in their bodies. And I just pray that you would help them, give them strength, um, help them to heal, Father, and to recover. Um, I pray for people who work in homeless shelters and how to, how, to the, how they deal with um, people that are presenting with, with um, symptoms for coronavirus. I pray that you give them wisdom on how to love and how to serve well. I pray, Father, for the church to be brave and strong and to do wise things, but uh, faith-filled things to serve people, Father. And, and let that start with me and let that start with Journey's Crossing. Um, Father, I ask that you would um, help our students this week to not live in fear, but to live uh, trusting you and confident that you are in control and that you love them and that you love the world and that you want your kingdom to grow and to expand and to um, to be healthy. Um, Father, I pray uh, for our church and ask that you would help us to uh, lead the way in our community um, in service and in love throughout this whole time. Um, thank you, Father, for all that you're doing um, in our lives. I pray that you would help uh, us to be, and our students to be, uh, people who are inviting others into relationship, healthy relationship uh, with them and with you. And I pray that the, the relationships that they build, whether it's with people who know you or don't, would draw everybody, and them, including themselves, to you. Because that, that's just the best place to be. Um, thanks, Father, again for this time. I pray for uh, this week um, that we would uh, figure out ways to be productive uh, for your kingdom this week. We pray all that in Jesus' name. Cool. Uh, well, thank you so much for being a part of our first ever online youth group at Journey's Crossing. Really stoked that you were here. And uh, we're going to try this again next week here, uh, 1115, back on YouTube. Uh, we'll, we'll put the content on different platforms, but YouTube will be where we're doing our live streaming and uh, chatting. Uh, so you're welcome to be a part of that next Sunday at 1115 uh, for online youth group. Again, uh, between now and then, we're going to do a couple of things to try to keep you connected. One is uh, you can check out the youth e-news that comes out every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. And you can check that out on our Facebook page. Hopefully you're on that distribution list, or on that email list, and you're getting that sent to you every single week. Um, you can see that also on my Facebook page, on the Youth Ministry Facebook page, which is Journeys Crossing YM. You can see it on our Insta feed, uh, Journeys YM. Um, you can see it 
at a number of different places. So keep on the lookout for that. You can get all the up to the minute information on youth stuff. Um, every day this week, we are going to be challenging our students to be praying together at noon. So we're inviting everybody to come from home and pray um, for our country, for our church, for uh, people with Corona, um, and just that we could be people that um, add to the solution um, and not become part of the problem. So, um, so we want to we want to pray um, as things get more clear. Um, we may open that up to having something here at the building every day uh, while school's out of session uh, at noon or maybe later in the day. We're, we're still playing around with that. But at very least, we're inviting everybody to pray where they are at noon together as a youth group. And then we'll let you know. So keep on Facebook and keep looking for social media. Um, if we're going to open up the building and have prayer times for students and maybe, you know, break out the board games and just hang out and just have some fun. Um, last but not least, uh, every day we, we started this new series called Choose Your Own Adventure. And every day since we started, we've been sending out a devotional text um, to students who ask for it. So we are sending that out currently. And if you want to get in on that... Um, we would love to do that. We would love to have you on board with that because it's a way that students can stay connected when we can't uh, meet face to face. Um, they can stay connected via text. So please text the word choose to this number 301-880-1543. That's 301-880-1543. You can text the word choose to that number and that will get you signed up for our daily text messaging uh, from students, for students, not from students, for students, excuse me, and um, that's start, you could start with that tonight and get it tomorrow, so hope you will. All right, uh, hope you're doing really, really well. Peace, everybody. Thanks for hanging out at Youth Group today, and we will see you next week. Later, guys. Bye.